In this video, I'll show you how to backtest a trading strategy using Vector BT. So what we're going to cover today is first, we're going to define a simple strategy using technical analysis. Then we're going to simulate its performance on historical data. Once we have that simulation, we'll actually vary the strategy parameters to see how that impacts the strategy performance and rerun the simulation. And then once we get a sense for that, we'll apply the same strategy on different assets and repeat. So the code for this video is going to be available at pythonfortraders.com. The link is in the description. It's a community of traders learning to improve their trading and get their time back by automating with Python. And I'll show you what's inside of it at the end of this video. So let's talk about Vector BT. So Vector BT is a backtesting framework that operates entirely on pandas and NumPy objects, and it represents complex data as structured NumPy arrays. So a big advantage of this is that it uses vectorized operations with NumPy to speed up the performance of the backtest. So you can test thousands of strategies in just a few seconds. It's both free and open source. There's also a pro version available, but the free version is quite useful already. So the quick pros and cons list here, um, on the strength side, it's very easy to use. It's very good for fast iteration, and it's really excellent for hyperparameter tuning when you have a strategy that you know already, but you wanna figure out what the best configuration of parameters is for it. And some of the weaknesses, it doesn't have that much documentation. You kind of have to read the source code to figure stuff out. The simplicity of it can reduce the realism a little bit compared to more detailed solutions, but it also has the added benefit of you not getting bogged down in the details. And lastly, there's no live trading options, so you can't go from backtest to live. Uh, instantly, you would have to code up your algorithm some other way. That said, the pro version may have more features. I'm only talking about the free version at the time of recording. So let's get into some code examples. First off, we'll set up our strategy with uh, our imports. We we'll use pandas, numpy, and matplotlib as usual, and seaborn as well for visualizations. And then the man of the hour is vector BT, which really will import as VBT. Here we're going to initialize the portfolio to have $100,000 in initial cash. And then we will just set the style for our plots in this line at the bottom. The V1 strategy that we're going to run is a single parameter dual moving average crossover on Bitcoin. So again, we'll say that our initial capital is $100,000. The start date for the strategy back test will be January 1st, 2022. The end date will be January 1st, 2024. So the strategy will run for two years. And then our fast moving average will be set as 10 days and the slow moving average will be set as 20 days. So we can translate this into code here by saying our start date and end date, and then actually downloading the Bitcoin price series using this YF data that lives on VBT. This is actually gonna download from Yahoo Finance. So we're gonna get the closed data, and then here you can see the Bitcoin price series that we got, 730 values long, the frequency is daily, and we have the closed prices. So given the Bitcoin price series, we can easily calculate the moving averages uh, using this vbt.ma.run. So vbt actually comes with a couple different indicators out of the box. Obviously, ma is moving average, and we'll say here that our fast moving average is 10 days, and we'll give it the short name of fast, and we'll do the same thing for our slow moving average, just giving it a parameter of 20 days instead. Now that we've got our fast moving average and slow moving average, we want to calculate our entries and exits. So the core strategy idea is that when the fast moving average goes above the slow moving average, that indicates a bullish trend reversal in a certain way. So that's going to indicate a time where we want to buy a uh, Bitcoin or whatever size we want to enter per trade. So here we'll say fast MA dot cross above slow MA. So this is as easy as it possibly could be. Vector BT is really good about this. And we'll see here that we actually end up getting a new series where instead of a price value, it's now all Boolean true or false where a false value is gonna indicate a day where we don't enter, and a true value would indicate that we do enter the trade at that given time. We can do the same thing with exits by saying fast MA dot MA cross below the slow MA, and we'll get the exact same sort of price series. So this is basically all we need to specify the strategy itself, just as a series of two vectors, hence the name vector BT. Now that we have this, we can actually calculate the, the strategy performance and run the back test. So I have VBT dot portfolio dot from signals, and it's gonna take in our price series, and then it's gonna take in our entries and exits and run the actual back test right away. I can get the total return. And you can see here that this strategy is not very good. It would have returned negative 32% over the two-year horizon on which it ran. But we can also get a lot more information than just the raw total return. So we can use this pf.stats function on the portfolio object that we just created to get a detailed breakdown of everything that the strategy would do. So you can see here the start date and the end date, the total period, the start value, the end value, total return, benchmark return, and so on. Um, we can see that the maximum drawdown here was 58%. And generally, this is not a very strong strategy. You can see that we had about 22 trades here. Uh, 21 were closed and one was still open at the time uh, the back test ended. Basically, it never got an exit signal. And actually, going to the next slide, we have even more statistics available to us here. And these are more interesting. So, so you can see the win rate here is only around 38%. Uh, the best trade did make 47%, so pretty awesome. Um, but the worst trade also lost 21%. So there's a lot of volatility, a lot of swings going on here. Um, the average winning trade was better than the average losing trade. Um, but again, the win rate was too low to really make this an overall winner. The average winning trade was held for 30 days, which is maybe a good sign that there was a trend reversal. Whereas the average losing trade was 
only held for nine days, which might mean that the trend reversal was not meaningfully significant. Finally, you can see down here that this strategy does have a negative expectancy and a negative sharp ratio. So it's really not something you'd ever want to trade with these given parameters on this asset. That said, we can still look at some nice charts because it's fun to look at nice charts. Um, so here, if we do this pf.plot.show, we can actually see the uh, order history uh, that this strategy had over the duration of the back test. So you can see here that over the two year period, the price of Bitcoin went from, I mean, almost $50,000 down to $20,000 or less than $20,000 and back up to $40,000, $45,000. So a lot of volatility, a lot of price swings in this particular asset, which may be a contributing factor to the performance. So you can kind of trace visually uh, what the winners and losers here were. For example, this very first trade, we seem to have bought it up here. Um, it seemed positive to start off with, but we didn't get a sell signal until it down here and we ended up losing money on that trade. We can also see the trade PL as a distribution where for each trade we made, we can see how profitable it was as a percentage. And in fact, you can also see that the more profitable ones here are visualized with larger circles. So our very best trade over here was over 40%. Um, and we have this big green circle, whereas the majority of our trades um, were losers. And we can see that distribution here. So this is a very useful chart. The last one we can see is our equity curve. This shows the cumulative returns of our strategy um, in purple. And then the gray line is Bitcoin itself. So that would be against the benchmark. So we've established that the strategy that we saw in the last part was not really a winner, um, but maybe it could be if we use slightly different parameters for the moving averages. So instead of doing 10 and 20 days, let's try a new experiment where we use a fast moving average of 10 days and 30 days and a fast moving average of 20 days and 30 days. So here we'll keep the slow moving average the same for both parameter sets, but we'll try out different values of fast moving averages to see which one might be better. In order to do this, we can actually keep the code almost exactly the same and we'll recalculate our fast MA and our slow MA by using the same MA.run function as before, but now we're gonna pass in a list of parameter values. So for the fast one, we'll have our 10 and 20, and for the slow one, we'll have our 30 and 30. And then we can do just like before, fastma.ma cross above, slow ma. And you'll see now, instead of just returning a list of true and false values, we actually have an array of true and false values where we can see one column at a time, our first parameter set 10 and 30, and then our second parameter set 20 and 30 exist in this data frame. Just like before, we can use from signals. I did skip over the part where I calculated the exits just now uh, because it's exactly the same as before and it's really just symmetric with the entries. But you can see here that when we run this function, we can do the total return and now it shows us the total return across both of these parameter windows in the same table. So now that we've switched this up, you can see that we actually have a positive return where the fast window with 10 and slow window with 30 gives us about 2%. And the 20 and 30 parameter set gives us 11 or almost 12%. Even with this matrix data structure that I now have, I can simply index it by the parameter set that I'm interested in. And then I can call dot plot or dot stats on it. I'm not going to get too much into the analysis of this right now, because again, it's exactly the same as it was for the first example. But you can see here that even if we're calculating multiple different strategy parameter sets, we can just do dot plot and basically index it as we had before. The last thing I'll show is how to add a new asset to the mix. So here we're going to download data for Ethereum and incorporate it into the combined price series. So the initial closing price data has both Bitcoin and Ethereum in it over the same time period as before. You can see that I have the code to do that here. Again, we can use yfdata.download. And then this logic here is just concatenating the two price series together. So they're in one uh, cohesive data frame. Then we can do the ma.run again, but now we'll pass the combined price series as well as the double set of parameters. And now when we do fastma.ma cross above, you can see here that we have our fast window and slow window, and now it's broken down by Bitcoin and Ethereum for each parameter set. So you can see how this is becoming more and more powerful where let's say we had a set of a dozen assets and a dozen different parameters that we wanted to check out. We could do that all here with one large table and basically just a couple lines of code. Again, to calculate the actual back test, we call from signals, and then we pass in the combined price series, our new entries and new exits, and now we get a new matrix where we can see for each possible set of which there are four. So there's the 10 and 30 with Bitcoin and Ethereum and the 20 and 30 with Bitcoin and Ethereum. We can see the overall performance of that strategy. And in particular, we'll see that the 20 and 30 parameter set with Ethereum performs the best out of all of these, where we have almost a 20% return using that strategy. This is the overall equity curve for each of those four different strategies. You can see it's very volatile. Um, I, I have omitted all of the different statistics and the, the sharp ratio and all of those sorts of things. And by no means, is just looking at absolute returns the best way to evaluate a backtest. You have to consider your, your beta, to the broader market, your volatility, how it would have performed relative to a benchmark. So just a disclaimer, I'm not trying to show you exactly how to analyze a backtest correctly, more so how to just use the code to get quick insights into different parameter sets that might be worth additional investigation. So, so the takeaways here is that Vector VT is a useful tool for backtesting, especially when you're trying to find the optimal hyperparameters for a given strategy. And I found its efficiency very impressive. Every line of code that I wrote here basically just executes instantaneously, which gives you a very fast feedback loop rather than the long iteration cycles where a backtest might take five, 10 minutes. I think there's more experimentation that I have to do to see how it'll handle complex strategies before I can really make a good decision on whether I want to use it for stuff like that. But I will say that many of the best strategies are quite simple anyway, and I think that they could be handled by something like VectorBT. 
So if you want to learn more about stuff like this and how to do automated trading with Python, you can come join the community for bonus content, courses, and code at pythonfortraders.com. We have a big network of traders and engineers and quants, as well as premium courses that'll teach you how to code in Python for automated trading from scratch. We got a bunch more stuff down there too, guided projects, personalized support, code reviews, templates, snippets, all that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, it's a collaborative environment where you're going to learn and grow and develop new skills that are going to take your trading to the next level together. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, go to pythonfortraders.com.